Mark Rosengarten. Welcome to... Ask Rosengarten. Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Rosengarten, the show where you're supposed to ask me questions so that I can answer them. Where are your questions? I've gotten one question this week. This question comes to us from Joseph Entman. The question is, is it possible in any way that alkali or alkaline earth metals can make six or seven covalent bonds instead of using their valence electrons for ionic bonds? Why or why not? Thank you. You're welcome. It's an interesting question, isn't it? Can alkali metals, instead of losing one valence electron or two valence electrons, somehow share their one valence electron or two valence electrons or somehow pick up uh, seven of them or six extra to make negative ions. Is it possible? The answer is no. Why? Well, here's the deal. When two atoms bond together, the bond involves electrons in one way or another. For example, when two nonmetals bond together, their pull on electrons, their electronegativity, is so high that both atoms want to gain electrons. But they can't both gain electrons, so they share electrons. Let's say, you know, chlorine has one unpaired valence electron, so when it comes across another chlorine that has an unpaired valence electron, the two valence electrons will pair up. And the chlorines will have equal pull on each, sharing that, the, that shared pair of electrons equally. All right, so that's a covalent bond. Co, together, sharing, valent, valence, covalent, sharing valence electrons. What about metals? Well, you see, Metals aren't going to form covalent bonds. There are some exceptions to this. They're the transition metals. They form coordinate complexes. I'm not getting into that here at all. The question is only about group 1 and 2 metals. Now, here's the deal with group 1 or 2 metals. If you take a look, lithium has a nuclear charge of plus 3. Beryllium has a nuclear charge of plus 4. Carbon has a nuclear charge of plus 6. Nitrogen plus 7. Oxygen plus 8 and fluorine plus 9. So what does that mean? That means as the nuclear charge increases, if you have the same number of energy levels, all these elements have two energy levels. Those two energy levels are going to be more attracted to the nucleus when the nuclear charge is greater. Okay, so why are these electrons attracted to the nucleus? Well, electrons are negative, and the nucleus is positive, and oppositely charged things attract especially the greater the charges are. So if we've got three protons in the nucleus and three electrons, that's going to attract, but not as much as having nine electrons and nine protons. So as long as the number of energy levels remains the same, the greater the nuclear charge is, the more strongly the nucleus will attract electrons to it. Now, the further down the periodic table you go, the more energy levels you have in that atom. Lithium only has two energy levels. Sodium has three, potassium has four, rubidium five, cesium six, and francium seven. Now, here's the thing. Yeah, negative is attracted to positive, but the further they are from each other, the less they're attracted. In addition, when you're dealing with the sixth energy level electrons being attracted to the nucleus, well, what about all the other five energy levels that come before it? Now, electrons are negatively charged, and negative charges repel each other. So, yeah, cesium's sixth energy level valence electron is going to be attracted to the nucleus, but it's got five other energy levels worth of electrons that are shielding the nucleus from that electron. So when you get further from the nucleus, you not only have the distance between the nucleus and the electron to deal with, you also have the shielding effect, which means that the inner energy levels are going to make it harder for that electron to be attracted to the nucleus. Now, what does this all come down to? Electronegativity, okay? An atom's electronegativity is its atom's attraction to electrons in a chemical bond, or how much does an atom want to gain electrons when it gets involved in a chemical bond? Well, nonmetal atoms tend to be very small, and for the same energy level, they've got the highest nuclear charge. Therefore, these guys are going to be far more attracted to electrons 
than these guys over here, where their radius is large and the valence electrons are very minimal. You have a lower nuclear charge as well. So weak attraction to electrons when they're bonding and strong attraction to electrons when they're bonding. There's no element with a greater attraction to another atom's electrons than fluorine. Now, if fluorine is walking down the street, and you happen to be walking down the street, it'll jump on you, and it'll bat you over the head, and it'll steal your electrons. It'll kill you to get your electrons. You don't want to breathe this stuff in, literally. <laughs> it will kill you. So, as the radius of the atom gets smaller, and the nuclear charge gets greater, an atom has a greater ability to attract electrons to it when it forms a bond. Alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, they just don't have what it takes. They don't have enough electronegativity to gain electrons, ever. So that means that lithium, sodium, potassium, etc., will never be able to gain seven electrons to make a stable octet. The only thing they can hope for is that they come across a nonmetal to give up their valence electron to and let the next energy level underneath become the stable octet. For example, sodium has a configuration of 281. And it has a pathetic electronegativity of 0.9. This is sodium. When it comes into contact with chlorine, chlorine has a configuration of 287. It has an electronegativity of 3.2. Now let's take a look at the difference here and try to figure out why chlorine has such a strong attraction to electrons and sodium doesn't. Both of them have three energy levels. Chlorine, though, has, you know, they, you see they both have 2-8, 2-8, two energy levels between them. But chlorine has seven electrons as valence electrons. Also, chlorine has 17 protons in the nucleus. Sodium only has 11 protons in the nucleus. So the attraction from the nuclear charge is going to be a lot less. Not only are there fewer protons, there's also fewer electrons. One electron to overcome the shielding effect seven electrons to overcome the shielding effect. Chlorine is a much smaller atom than sodium is because those electrons get pulled in closer to the nucleus. Now the difference between sodium and chlorine is, well, let's take a difference here, 2.3. A difference of anything higher than 1.7 is enough that the more electronegative atom will simply yank away the less electronegative atom's valence electron, zoop, giving it a stable octet and a negative charge, leaving the other atom with a positive charge, thereby forming an ionic bond. Well, what about sodium bonding to another metal? Well, here's the deal. Metals cannot form compounds with other metals. You see, when you form a compound, there's a definite whole number ratio between the elements that are being bonded in the compound. For example, in sodium chloride, Chlorine gains one electron. Sodium loses one electron. Therefore, it's always going to exist in a one-to-one -one ratio, NaCl. It can never be anything other than that. It's not Na.8Cl1.3. It can't exist like that. It's a one-to-one -one ratio because that's what the charges make it. However, when two metals come together, they're not going to form a compound. You can put metal atoms in the same general space. You can even mix them together. You know, freeze them, make a solid. But the metal atoms will not technically be bonding in a compound. They're all going to be positive nuclei and positive kernels immersed in a sea of electrons able to conduct electricity through it. However, it's never going to be in a definite whole number ratio. You can always change it if you want. You don't need to have a one-to-one -one ratio, for example. So you can make alloys with metals, but you can't make compounds with just metals. So to answer your question, Nope. You cannot have alkali metals and alkaline earth metals gaining electrons. Because who are they going to gain electrons from? Who are they going to beat up on? Their electronegativity is so weak, there's nobody out there that they can gain electrons from. They're going to have to be satisfied with being picked on by the metals. But don't worry too much for them. They like losing their valence electrons. That's what they do. That's, their, that's just what they are. So don't think of nonmetals as being bullies and walking up and bashing people over the head and stealing their electrons, because first of all, atoms aren't people. As far as we know, atoms don't have feelings. Now, if I hurt any atom's feeling by saying this, I'm sorry. But as far as we know, atoms do not have feelings. They don't have consciousness. Again, 
I could be wrong about this, probably not, but just in case, I, I'm very sorry, atoms. Nonmetals gain electrons because they have a strong attraction to electrons. Metals lose electrons because they don't. So if you've got a high school chemistry question you want answered, or a basic college chemistry question you want answered, please email me at askrosengarten at gmail.com. Those questions I can answer, I will answer right here. So what are you waiting for? Come on, open up your email program and ask Rosengarten.